Is that true? Um, before we actually get into the main thing, though, I'm just curious, Isaiah. Did you? I know the answer is no, but I'm just, I'm just gonna ask for posterity's sake. Did you watch the D and D direct on either of these classes? No, the one that came out like two days ago, yesterday, day before. No, no, I, I know, I know you didn't. Like I said, I knew yeah. the answer to the question, but uh, okay, so we look. Got, I've been too busy playing Baldur's Gate. <laughs> we got some more information. Finally, about, uh, finally, yes, yes. Isaiah's uh, you know, it was fucking how many months behind everybody? <laughs> like last two year? years, but it's fine. Look, last not two I couldn't years. afford it back then. I'm not, not two yeah, years. it's like a year and a half. Like yeah, yeah, a year and some change. Uh, point being, um, D- I got it for free. D and D had another. I could afford it for free dollars. Um, yeah. D and D did another D and D direct, uh, which I think is only the second one they've done yet. Um, and uh, it's pretty short. It's like twenty minutes or so. Uh, but uh, nineteen minutes. But that being said, um, we got some more information about uh, Project Sigil which is what they're calling their 3D virtual tabletop. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember. Do you remember? I remember um, our little conversation I... about the uh, the 3D tabletop. And we were like, what would they have to do to make us actually use this fucking thing? Do you remember what you said? Don't. All right. You know, I really tried to tee you up for the spike on that one. We said it so long ago, brother. What do you mean? I, I, I can't believe you just completely failed me like this. Anyway, what we both said was some nature of a really intricate, well done 3D map builder where you can basically, you know, make your own like video game style terrain, basically. Um, it has exactly that. And. Ooh. And it has a Hero Forge style, style mini builder in it, too. Fuck. All right. Well, but wait, there's more. Remember how we were talking about when D&D Beyond released maps and we were like, why would you release maps if you are also currently working on Project Sigil? Not that we knew it was called that, but, you know, why would you do both at the same time? Right. Maps is the like 2D thing that they put out in like a kind of alpha version on D&D Beyond. And now they're also working on this 3D project. What's the point of doing both of them? Would you believe we have an answer to that question? I I would now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, The reason is because you basically can use them together seamlessly. Oh? Yeah. So in the 3D, in in projects, in Sigil, the the project, not the place in D&D, you can import 2D maps and 2D tokens. So you could have 3D tokens on a 2D map or 2D tokens on a 3D map or just do it all 2D in Project Sigil. And it all just integrates with D&D Beyond's maps. I'm not going to lie. I was really hoping you were going to say you could scan the 2D maps to make a 3D environment because that would be insane. No, I don't think you can do that, but you could lay down the 2D map and then use the map builder to simply build the 3D environment directly on top of it. You could, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think that would be very hard. And from what I've heard from the couple of uh, influencers who have, you know, actually messed around with Project Sigil a little bit, it's quite a good map builder. Nice. So basically, we're getting everything we asked for. Also, it's free. Like completely, like free 99 Free 99 to use. Whoa. Now, granted, we don't know what kind of there is going to be monetization in it. Obviously, we don't know what style of monetization it's going to be. And the reason we don't know that is because the developers also don't know that. (laughs) Fantastic. Uh, Because they have said very openly, we don't know what kind of monetization we want to do for do with this. So we're going to let the fans try it out. And then you guys tell us what kind of stuff you might want to pay for or what forms or what style of like how you would want to pay for stuff. So like an example was given where would you want to pay like 25 cents for a texture pack, for example, or would you rather have, you know, 15, $20 Castle Raven loft pre-made map that comes with all the assets 
and then you can use the pre-made map or use the assets to build your own. Like, what kind of monetization do you want to do? They haven't decided yet. So, yeah. So they're still... Like, yes, like all of the above? Maybe. Here's the thing. That's one of those things that I don't mind monetizing the shit out of. Mm -hmm. As long as you have ever, like, don't block off tools from that, right, right? right? Give us the whole basic toolkit. And if we want to do the hard work for free, we can do the hard work for free. Or you can make it a subscription service or pay for it. And then they just start throwing fucking assets at you. Yeah. People will pay for that. I will pay for that. Yeah. So basically, uh, they don't know exactly how they want to monetize. They're working on it and they're open to suggestions. And a closed beta is coming soon. Hmm. Yeah. And like I said, they're doing exactly what me and you said we would want them to do. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, now, the beta is closed, so it is like a chance to get in, obviously. Uh, but you literally just go yeah. on your D&D Beyond count and say, uh, I would like to uh, sign up for the beta. And they're like, cool, you're signed up. Uh, and if you get uh -huh. in, you get an activation code plus five additional activation codes. So only one person in your party, like if you have a group of norm, you know, your standard group of players, whoever you usually play, with, only one of y'all needs to get it. So what I'm saying is sign up, bitch, sign up now. I will do that. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd mention all that because I was um, I, I was a little flabbergasted, if I'm being honest. Understandable. I was shocked. This is that thing, though, right? O on a separate notion, this is this thing where uh -huh. it's like Wizards does something fucking sick. Yes. And then they ruin it. You're like, God yes. damn it, Wizards. And then they do something sick, and then they ruin it. You're like, God damn it, Wizard. <laughs> yes. It, this just keeps happening. Hopefully this doesn't get ruined, but basically everything they said, the rest of the information in the direct was like nothing super crazy. Um, but pretty much everything they said in the direct about Project Sigil was kind of what I wanted to hear, more or less. So I went from not interested at all to like maybe interested. I will say the one big problem with this at the end of the day is that a 3D virtual tabletop is going to be more labor intensive than a 2D one just by the nature of the of the beast so it may be a situation where like 90% of the time i use, like it let's say i use this on the regular for playing D&D right 90% of the time I use 2D assets and then when I want to do something big and cool, you bust out the 3D stuff, right? Like, because it's going to take time to build those maps, no matter how good the map builder is. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so yes, but they, they there are a lot of things they can do to speed up the process, right? If, if you have yes. like a yes. pretty well put together snapping system, that'll help. If you've got like... If you have a bunch of assets that are all sort if of keyed to each other. Well, if there's like a templating system and like a proper copy paste system that works really well, there's definitely things you can do for sure. But no matter what, it's still going to be more of a process than like your basic 2D thing, you know, because you have to account for a third dimension. So there's going to be more stuff going on. there. So it's going to be more labor intensive. But here's the thing. If it's really fun to use, you might like the labor, you know? <laughs> It could be a really yeah, for fun sure. tool. So I don't know. I'm not I don't know if I'm going to wholly switch over to it. Probably not, because I'm someone who plays a lot of games other than D&D. &D. But, you know, I'm now considering using it where I really was not considering it before. So we'll see. Very fair. That's very fair. It could come out like shit, though, too. That's still on the table. It could. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I don't think it, just based on you, you saying people saying it's pretty sick. Yeah. I don't feel like it will because we do have some evidence of it being good. And at this, this point, true. most creators have no need to fucking slob the wizard's knob anymore. No, like, right, the good really. faith is gone. Yeah, so no. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, they did also make the claim, and this is the one claim I kind of don't believe them on. They claimed, you know, it's not 
a D&D tool set. It's just a virtual tool set. You could play anything if you want in it. I'm a little skeptical mm. of that part. That's the one. Yeah, statement that where sounds like, kind of like cap. Yeah, I don't know. There probably will be generic tools, but if you think about just roll 20 sheets for different kinds of games, right? If you just think about all of the stuff required into making a basic roll 20 sheet to cover like the basic functionality of a different system, there's no way you're going to make generic tools that can cover everything. So like, will it work? Could you play, you know, Apocalypse World in Project Sigil? Maybe, but is it going to work as well as having a proper character sheet on a roll 20 or a foundry or something like that? Probably not. So, you know, yeah, that one, I might think they might be exaggerating a little bit. Apparently, they claim somebody made shoots and ladders in Project Sigil, like uh, someone on the dev team. That's really uh, funny. Which well, is so funny, the, 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 thing that, the thing that worries me, right, is if they're if they're going to talk it up about it being a generic map maker. Yeah. What I don't, I, I, if that's the case, give us assets that aren't just fucking fantasy. medieval fantasy. Yeah. Like Western medieval, like well, Western medieval fantasy. So give us like, you they, know, like they did Chinese s- gardens or right, fucking right. massive pagodas. Give us shit like that. They did say it's also going to have an open marketplace for other creators to make stuff much like Perfect. a roll 20. So the hope is that those other creators will do that. Uh, so yeah, but yes, if, it, yeah, if, if we just end up with 6,000 different versions of a tavern, I will be a little disappointed for sure. Mm-hmm. That's not the main topic though. I just wanted, I just wanted to mention that because I thought it was interesting that me and you were like, I want them to do this, that, and this. And then wizard said,